Good I job. should have reminded you, I'm sorry. No worries. So welcome to Peace Education and Action for Impact, the official launch. Uh, my name's Phil. I'm very fortunate to, to wear both hats within both the Rotary world and World Beyond War. I'm a Peace Fellow and also a Positive Peace Activator, and I'm the Education Director for World Beyond War. Welcome to the movement. Here is what we're going to be looking at specifically today. We're going to discuss the program, its purpose, process, and products. When I say products, I actually mean, we actually mean impacts, expected results from the, from the program. We're going to hear from key collaborators, such as Rotarians, Rotary Action Group for Peace, that we invited to join forces with us on this collaborative venture. We're also going to elicit feedback from you all and your ideas, because this program is a work in progress, it's a pilot, it's being co-created, and it's very much at its core, it's about collaboration and partnership. But partnership, of course, comes in different ways. Um, you know, different people do different things, but they collaborate together. So we want to invite your, your input with regards to this, and then to share ideas of how we can get it, how you can get involved either as a Rotarian or other partners that we've invited. Before doing that, for those that have been on Zoom calls with me before and webinars, you might know that we always like to start off with getting into relationship or getting to know each other or getting to see who's here. So we're going to do this. Um, please put your camera on if, if you haven't done so far. Um, I know there's a lot of nice cameras on so far. And we're going to ask you a question. And if the answer is yes, you put your hands up, or you stand up, or you shout, yes. Okay? Okay, so the first question is, uh, are you a Rotarian? No. Oh. <laughs> so there was no. Yes. <laughs> yes. Negatives are not allowed. Okay, <laughs> that was great. Thank you so no. much. Okay, are you uh, um, are you from Europe? Stand up, shout, wave your hands. <laughs> okay. No. Are you from Africa? Yeah. 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 There we yeah. Go. <laughs> are you from North America? Hey. Okay. Good. Are you from South America? South America. Okay. The other question is, do you class yourself as a young person? If you do, put your hands up. Yes. Yes, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Everybody. Okay. Here's the other one. If you are against war and for peace, stand up or put your sh shake your hands, etc. Yes. Okay. Yes. We are all against war and we are all against peace. Okay. Well, the reason why we did no, that. We're not against peace. No, we're not against. No, we're not against peace. Not against peace. Did I say against peace? Yes. <laughs> you're we are for peace. You're, at, you're practicing your active listening skills. We are again <laughs> and for peace. Thank you so much. The reason why we did that is because we can see that there's huge diversity in the group. Some younger, some not as young, uh, from different countries, from different rotary backgrounds, some not from rotary backgrounds, but we're all united in this one collaborative of working against war and working for peace. So um, thank you so much for doing that. It's lovely to kind of get to know you all. And also it's great kind of showing our hand to me. So we're gonna move on now. We've got to know each other. Bill, before you move on, hmm. could we ask everyone to mute themselves? And then just unmute when you want to speak, and then that way we'll avoid background and the recording will be crisper. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you haven't done already, although we've got to know each other a little bit, please write in your, in the chat, you know, what your name and where you're from, just so we can get to know each other. We're going to move on to say something about the specifics of the program. And we're going to do this in a really nice way because this program is really about collaboration and we're going to start off and someone's going to go very red here, but we always like centering very important people. And before talking about it, we're going to center 
and say a massive thank you to the Rotary Action Group for Peace, who decided to collaborate with us on this program. And also in particular, Alison. Alison, thank you so much for, for agreeing to collaborate with us on this program. Some of you on the call might know might not know anything about the Rotary Action Group for Peace or Rotary. So what we've done strategically this time is start off by giving front and center a place for Rotary and Rotary Action Group for Peace. So can you can you say a few words, Rot um, Alison, about, about Rotary and Rotary Action Group for Peace? I'm also appreciative of this photo that you use. It's quite a nice one. It's a shame <laughs> I don't look like it anymore. But hey, ho, I did. I did. So. Uh, Rotary, as many of you will know, is one of the biggest service organizations in the world with 1.25 million members. It was in the formation of the UN and it works at every level. The wonderful thing about Rotary is it's a religious, a political, a social, a economic. And um, it's in, as I said, in over 200 countries, but all of us actually have the same focus. We have six, seven areas of focus, the most recent being environment, but the overarching one, in my opinion, being peace. So we're interested in literacy, maternal health development, and so on. But that's what knits us together. And with that area of peace, and with the other areas, uh, Rotarians come together and form action groups, which is like-minded people. So the Rotary Action Group for Peace is a global organization and brings together folk from around the world which have a passion for peace. They come together, they network, we've been doing lots of things together and as a result, they can do bigger, better projects, they can share expertise, they can help train and they can be involved in things such as this. And the thing about Rotary, it's all volunteers. So wherever you get a Rotary presence, nobody has coerced them into being part of it. Nobody's paying them to be part of it. We choose to be part of it because we want to be change makers also, and we want peace. Is that sufficient, Phil? Lovely, thank you. Okay, I'm just gonna, thank you so much. Thank you, um, Alison. So that's one of the reasons why World Beyond War decided to collaborate with and invite into the process the Rotary Action Group for Peace. A little bit about um, World Beyond War. We're a global grassroots organization with membership in 192 countries, and we are strategically anti-war and, and pro-peace in the sense that we go after the war system because we think that um, in order to estate, um maintain and sustain peace in the world, we need to address the war system. So that is the work that we do. We do that by addressing both negative and positive peace. And we're gonna say something about that shortly in terms of how it's infused in the program. So there's a little bit about World Beyond War. We're always, before continuing, it's really, really important to talk about other collaborators and how this can we work from the premise that we accomplish more together, hence why we invited um, and collaborating with the Rotary Action Group for Peace and many Rotarians. But we need to say a massive thank you to young people. The, pro the focus of this program is, in, is on young people, but actually the, the rationale and the purpose for developing this program as well actually come from young people themselves. What happened was we were fortunate to be asked to speak at many different events involving young people. And they asked us, Phil, could we do something with World Beyond War that would put together peace education and peace action? And then we got in conversation and that's when we started to reach out to the Rotary family, including the Rotary Action Group for Peace to see if they were interested in collaborating. This program that, that, that we're putting together is, First and foremost, a collaboration, Rotary Action Group for Peace and World Beyond War. And at the same time, along the way, and I noticed there's some on the call as well, such as Scott Martin and others that are on the call, we'll be including many Rotary Peace Fellows, including Maria Fernanda also from Colombia and others that will be involved in this process. It will also engage Rotaract and Rotarians in different parts of the world. So a massive, huge thank you to Rotary and your network. Another massive thank you is to the global team. And actually, if I come off screen now, 
I want to acknowledge this global team. So please, if you've been involved with the global team working with us for the last year on this, perhaps, please give a wave so we, we can recognize you and acknowledge you. You know who you are. There we go, Sarah. Jackie, come on, put your hands up. So we want to acknowledge you as well. There we go. Others. OK, thank you. So thank you to the global team for, for, for collaborating with us on this one. Also, we want to say a massive thank you to the 12 country project teams. Um, doesn't matter how good our content is or what we put together. The real secret source of this work is you in, in these 12 countries that are working hard together to make this program happen. So thank you to all of the project teams. So let's acknowledge you guys. So the, the, whether you're a coordinator, a mentor, a young person, please show us your hands who, if you're involved in, in the global project, uh, country project teams. So, okay, perfect. There we go. <laughs> nice, okay, thank you. So it's really important to acknowledge. Um, and thank you to everybody that's on the call because you're going to have an opportunity to help us co-create this program as well. It's work in progress. Um, it's a living product. It's dynamic and we want your feedback. So we're going to get to that shortly. Before we do that, let's talk about, well, why did we put this program together? This is a main driving argument. Equipping young people with the tools, networks, which is Rotary is a wonderful network, hence why we're collaborating, and support to promote peace and challenge war is one of the, mo the largest, most global and important challenges facing humanity. Now, we have more young people on the planet than ever before. So obviously, if we're not involving them meaningfully, we're going to be missing out something. At the same time, we're now at a 30 year high in terms of violence. At the same time, we're, according to the IEP and Summer Lewis is here and others, um, we're spending about 14 trillion a year on economic um, containment of violence. Two trillion of that is spent on the war system. So real reasons for engaging young people in both promoting peace and challenging war. The focus, if we begin with the end in mind, well, what's the broad vision of this program? What's, you know, what's the driving force behind it? The idea is that we hope to contribute to building sustainable peace in at least these 12 countries um, by connecting and supporting a new generation of peace builders to help and support them engage in youth-led, intergenerational, community-engaged peace-building efforts. That's the broader goal. Um, and in order to get to there, we have a model. We've developed a model. And this is what it looks like. Um, the idea is that we take young people and their mentors and coordinators through a process, which um, in, which in general is split into two parts. Part one is peace education and part two involves research, activism and advocacy work. The idea is that we work with 12 country partners and it's a real youth led intergenerational cross cultural developmental process. This is the wonderful magic about this program, bringing all these different countries together. And we're going to say something about that shortly. Here's a model as well, which kind of captures it. I, I put this together during the PhD. Um, it's, it's an idea of putting people at the center of peace building work. Um, I also developed a version of this for a program that helped start and develop called New Gen Peace Builders. And we, we put young people at the center. Uh, when I originally developed it, we put people at the center. And the idea is, is the engaging young people and all, all, all ages, et cetera, in, in peace work. Um, so the question is, well, OK, great. There's the model. There's the rationale. What are you what are we going to physically do on this program? Well, we spoke about the collaborative venture between Road to Action for Peace and World Beyond War. But these are the real people we need to acknowledge. Twelve country project teams. How cool is that? Uh, before doing that, um, let's uh, yeah, let's just say a little bit out loud in terms of what do you mean by a country project team? Each country project team is made up of coordinators, mentors and young people. And the idea that it's a real collaboration working through the process of peace education and action across 14 weeks. 
So shout out to the country project teams. As you can see, we have a real mix, and this was specifically strategically designed to have a good mix of some, uh, we're all on spectrum, right, of peace and violence. Some, some uh, right from relatively peaceful um, countries, right through to uh, a lot less peaceful countries. You know, if you're going off the IEPs kind of um, way of looking at relative peace. The idea is that global North countries can learn so much from global South countries with regards to peace building. At the same time, global South countries can learn so much from other global North countries and other global South countries. And this is the really cool thing and the pioneering thing about this program is that it gives these different countries opportunities to engage with each other and learn from each other. Um, they, they participate by um, uh, uh, having coordinators, mentors and young people as part of the team. And here is one example of a team. Um, this is the Kenya team. And maybe, um, uh, let's see if we've got another. This is the Serbia team. And maybe if people are, are on the call from Kenya, if you can show your hands and let us see you. Okay, I can see, yeah, there we go. <laughs> and if people are on the phone from Serbia. Okay, I can see some of you, yeah, okay. Great, hey, <laughs> great. And another one, and this is the great thing that we, we put this template together and sent it out to the different teams. The whole idea of this program is that we have a structure and it's a very planned, well thought out structure, but the structure is flexible and allows for innovation from the ground up. So we really want to learn from each country. And in, with that in mind, look at this, what the Venezuela team put together. How cool is that? That's another version of the template. If there's any of the any of the team from the Venezuela here, please show your hands. Hey, there we go. Okay, hello Venezuela team. Um, so that gives you a bit of an example of the country project teams. A question now is what what they're going to do? Well, they're going to work through a process of peace education and peace action. Peace education is six weeks online learning with the exception of three live sessions where we take at least 150, so 120 of them will be young people, 10 young people from each of the 12 countries, and then 30 adults, but actually people on the call know that it's, it's a lot more than 30 adults um, in the end because we will be giving free access also to the coordinators as well we will take them through a process of um, peace education that looks at the head the heart the hands of peace building this is the model that we're that, that we're using for the head the heart the hands so two weeks we'll look at the theories concepts and ideas related to peace conflict violence and power we'll look at the the role of um systems thinking and also we'll look at the war system and also um ideas for dis dismantling the war system and creating a peace system part two is the heart part so this is the really the one week is turning the inwards and looking at our own identity our own development our own way of being in peace building with ourselves and with others and then week four we'll look at um yeah peaceful ways of being with others which is about how do we be in communication with others how do we interact with others we'll look at issues related to interpersonal peace uh, interpersonal relationships facilitated dialogue and active listening and then the doing part is the hands so this is where they go and do their projects and we we, we work through the process of designing implementing evaluating a project is a little bit, you know, about the head, the heart, the hands. Um, the content is based on world, is, it's created by World Beyond War, based on our award-winning um, educational materials. We won the Global Educators Challenge for our work around um, educating around global challenges, such as the war system, such as the environmental um, crisis and nuclear weapons, as well as negative and positive peace. So, um that's a little bit out of the work. Here's some people that have gone through our programs. We have people right from very young, right through to not so the last course that we did. Um, the, the oldest, I think, that we had on the program was 94 that I know of. So how about that for intergenerational collaboration? 
that's the peace education part. The peace action part is where they actually take what, what they've learned, the country project teams, and this is where the collaborative learning is put into actual practice. So country project teams work together across eight weeks to put into practice what they've learned. They design, implement, evaluate, and communicate a project. The projects are very, very broad and, and context-specific. So a project in Venezuela would look different to a project in South Sudan, would look different to a project in the US and Canada, for example. And at the same time, they have a broad framework. This, is, this framework is, um, is based on three broad strategies for ending war and establishing a just and sustainable peace. One of the strategies is demilitarizing security, so they can choose one of these areas to work uh, to work on within their peace projects, which is probably more along the lines of negative history. As peace builders, uh, we need to look at both negative and positive peace. Um, it, it's very well established in the literature. It's very, very important. And there's some great work done, and we'll be drawing from that in terms of IEP, looking at positive peace, and we also need to look at negative peace. The second strategy is managing conflict without violence. Um, and here is a whole range that people can choose from as well. And then the third one, which I, we probably think we'll have more projects focused on, but let's see, will be the more kind of future orientated culture of peace focus, um, more aligned perhaps with positive peace. None of this is declarative. None of this is saying that you need to do this. You need to think this. You know, it's about offering options and you as a country project team deciding through your analysis what you want to do your project about. Really, really cool thing. As, as the country project teams are going through their projects through the eight weeks, they will be meeting up once a week with their mentors to, to work on progress, to troubleshoot and things like this. Another really cool thing is that we'll be organizing what we're calling reflections or reflect, reflective practice groups where, where country project teams have an opportunity to present their ongoing progress with regards to their projects. So for example, Venezuela can present to South Sudan, South Sudan will present to Cameroon, et cetera, a Turkey, Ukraine, Russia, et cetera. So we're an opportunity to really engage in peer-to-peer -peer learning and learn from each other and test out ideas and reflect on ideas, et cetera. So there's a little bit about the, the peace action part. Um, in terms of impact, the, the impact is really on a number of different levels. One is that, of course, on the individual level, you know, this is taking young people and um, their, their mentors, their coordinators, including many Rotarians, through an educational journey, which is um, quite different to, to others because it's working the head, the heart, the hands. It's looking at some of the bigger issues, the broader, broad um, bird's eye view of the biggest peace and conflicts. Uh, challenges we face, such as the war system, right through to the more practicalities of, um, well, how can I learn some things to help with my engagement in everyday life? So we would go right from the bird's eye view, right through to the practicalities of how does it help me in my everyday life? Um, but, ha but on the broader level, obviously, the country project teams will be producing projects. So, and they will specifically address the needs in each particular context. So there's another uh, benefit of the project. And then at the end, um, countries will be supported to produce accounts of their peace building work. Um, and they can be uh, produced in different ways and be communicated in different ways. Some might choose social media, some might choose video, some might choose an article, some might choose an op-ed. All will present the outputs of their projects um, at an end of community or end of project event. And those again will be context specific. And of course, we're in COVID now, so we need to think about that as well. Okay, so let me just check in. Alison, is there any questions or anything as we're going there, on? There is a question from mm -hmm. two. Somebody says they couldn't see if there were any field um, related uh, images to environment and peace in the images, were there? Any images relating environment and peace? When you say images, what do you mean? Um, that's what, um, who was it who, who asked me that? 
Um, how do if, I... if, if you actually if you actually mean with regards to the um, the strategies, yes, there is. Um, there is. We know that um, there is. It is environmental peace building is in here with regards to one of the issues that you could work on. Um, so yes, environmental peace building is definitely one, and not everybody knows the connections between the um, war and, and the environment, etc. So that will definitely be one that you could look at for sure. Okay, and Sarin says, how can those of us who are older see the world beyond war curriculum? Also, curriculum. this seems mostly well, focused on young people, uh, which is great, but what is the role, if any, of, the, of those of us who are older? So, so, how, so how can the older ones see the, the world ones beyond your curriculum? Beyond. And although it's focused on the young, which is great, what's the role of us older ones? Okay, great questions. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm getting some feedback. I don't know if others are, but I was getting, I couldn't yes. listen too well then either. Um, but, but I think I, I heard you in terms of what are the role of the older ones. The whole idea of that, the model that put forward is putting people at the center of peace building uh, and people means younger and not so young. The idea of this, we design this project in such a way that it will be youth led, but adult guided and community engaged. So all have a role to play in peace building, all have a role to play, but we play different roles. So the idea here is that young people are put at the center and supported to do the projects, but adults are there to support young people through the process. And in fact, actually, it should be an opportunity to learn from each other, not just about adults supporting young people, believe me, also about young people supporting adults and, and helping to engage them more effectively in peace building work. So the role of the adults, that's one role. Another role of the adults, of course, is helping with finances as well. So there's many on the call today that have helped fund this work. So thank you, thank you, thank you to those that have helped fund that work. Um, another thing about Rotary is, is wonderful networks. Rotary have so many networks. So let's tap into those networks of Rotary, et cetera. So a great, great question. And last um, question, which will be handled in the chat. Is Onyeko Nwige of Nigeria says, how can I join the Nigerian team? So I think that's a question for the Nigerian coordinator to link up, is it not? It is, if the Nigerian coordinator is on it. And, and at the same time, the way in which we'll say something about the selection of the teams. So that's a question. Yeah, there's a bit of feedback here. So, Alison, if it, and Azu, oh. you can kind of keep an eye out on the, the, the mute people. Yeah, we'll check. Just make sure, everyone, please, that you stay muted. Thank you. All of you mute. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. So, a, a great question. We've been working on this effort for at least nine months. Um, and what's happened is, is that we set up the structure in terms of well, what should a country project team look like, you know, and, and who should it be, uh, who should it consist of, etc. broadly. And then we put to type together, you know, some roles and responsibilities some deliverables, etc. from the country project team. So an ideal country project team is made up of 14 or more people, two coordinators, which have strategic leadership for, for the project in that country. Then they are responsible for overseeing everything that happens within that country and that country project team. They are responsible also for recruiting the young people and the young people are 18 to 35, by the way, on this program, which is a broad definition. Um, and two mentors and the mentors would work with the young people through that process. We set up that structure and at the same time, we did so in such a way that we want to allow for innovation to come from each country. And at the end of the day, the local people, the, the, the country project team should decide who their country projects team should be. And I want to say now, I like very, very, very strongly, which I've said before, the secret source and, and the, the real benefit of this project, if, if, we, if we're able to achieve what we realistically want to achieve, is that it really depends on the country project teams. It really depends on the deliberate and careful selection of 
the country project teams that commit to the whole process. It's not just about signing up. I think if for those that are on the call the other day, signing up for the gym, for example, you sign up to the gym, that's fine, but you do the work. The idea is, is that the country project teams work through the process of 14 weeks and be in touch constantly throughout the process. So with regards to the question about Nigeria, you'd have to kind of write to me and I can easily connect you to the, the Nigeria coordinator if that would be helpful. So as far as we're concerned, there are no more straightforward questions, Phil, at this point. Perfect. Well, let us take this opportunity then to invite the, um, our collaborators. So, so Alison, are you okay to say a little bit about why you're excited about this program, etc.? Why, why you wanted Road to Action Group for Peace and others to get involved? Yes, I'm very excited because um, the, the bulk of the work that we generally do is, is around positive peace, but education is at the core of everything we do. And what I liked... Um, what drag, drew me to this was the Geneva Incubator 18 months ago when Phil and I were paired together. Phil being a fellow person from my own country, we clicked, and I have a great regard for what he's able to do and what he does do. And that's what drew me in. And then as we started talking about this program, it just grew and grew on me because I think education is the key. And every peace builder will tell you that the education starts from the cradle and continues to the grave. So it's very important. And it's more important as well to actually um, formulate education, have access to education at ages before the old ways have sort of become cemented. One of the difficulties when you become older, you inherit a lot of baggage. When you're younger, the chances are you haven't done that and you start. And so the whole point of this is to give analytical, critical thinking skills and for you to make good judgments on your own part. And I just think that's amazing. But the, the other selling point, of course, is seeing your 10, 12 countries in the world all linking up. And this is the pilot. So I'm looking forward to the next one. And I'm looking forward particularly to go into places in the world which don't have opportunities, places that need this, places of conflict and difficulties. So I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Thank you. So just to give people a heads up, I'm gonna, um, we're going to ask a couple of people now from a mix of both young people going through the program, but also coordinators and participants. So giving you a heads up, we'll start with Annie from Venezuela. And then we can perhaps go to Bior from South Sudan. And then we can go to Guy from Cameroon. And then we can go to Jackie from the US. That's four of us so far. So um, Annie, are you okay to say a little bit about why you thought it was important to be for Venezuela to be involved with this program, please? Sure, sure. So I wanna say first, thank you. Thank you, you guys for, for opening this space for all of us to be part of it. Um, so personally, I'm involved in Waterdy and the War Beyond War, and it was just the perfect opportunity to, to start in this collaboration of project. Um, so Venezuela is going through a really, really complicated and complex situation at the moment, and we don't have, we usually don't have the resources and the information or anything to, to be able to do peace projects and promote positive peace in our home country. So the, oppor the opportunity that the young people have in Venezuela to get the information and the network to be able to um, make a difference in our community, it's really important for us, especially now. Um, where, you know, it's just, if you have um, seen the news lately, we are the second largest refugee crisis after Syria, and we are not in war. Um, so it's a really complex situation. It's a wonderful and beautiful opportunity that you're giving us. Uh, and we have wonderful sponsors in, in Rotary uh, that sponsor us um, to be able to participate today. I think it's, it's, it's wonderful. And, and I'm really excited to get to know the people in our team. We have a really diverse team and it's awesome. It has been a teamwork. We have awesome coordinators, mentors, and students are, are in our team. Yeah, I'm really, really excited for the opportunity. So thank you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. Thank you. And we're very much looking forward to learning from you and from the great work that's being done uh, in Venezuela with regards to peace. So thank you so much. So here's test your memory. Who did I say next? I know Guy, I said, and I know I said. Beyond South Sudan. 
Bjorn from South Sudan. Yes, are you there? I'm here. I'm here, Phil. Thank you, Phil. So How are you? for us, it's quite. Uh, thank you, thank you. It's quite. It's quite a good opportunity for us to be here on this uh, inaugural program. I think for the South Sudanese team, it's more of pride because as South Sudan, a country that has been almost in war, because I myself am in my 30s and I've only known war since I was born. So it's quite an awesome opportunity for us to be once in on the table where decisions are made regarding peace, rather than being on the other side of peace being tried to be brokered for us. So it's more of like uh, we, we feel great being part of this inaugural program, and we are so stoked that we are here, and we hope that uh, we get to engage with everybody else and learn from everybody else how they get to do their things. So it's quite an honor for us to be here. Thank you, Bia. It's an honor for us. Thank you so much. Again, looking very much forward to learning from the great work that you're doing. Why don't we go from, I know we'll go to you, Guy, in a moment. Guy next. Yeah, yeah. Guy of Cameroon. Yeah, Guy, are you okay there, Guy? I did see Guy. Guy is not available, but I'm from Cameroon. Okay, are you from the Cameroon team with Guy? Yes, I'm a, men I'm a mentor from Cameroon. Oh, please talk about yeah why you why you think it's important for Cameroon and and who you are and yeah. Yes, the the the, the situation is really the the program is really good for Cameroon because you know you are facing war in the anglophone regions from now west and south west and so we really think that with the formation we will just. Uh, carry about all the the the, the tools from uh, from the formation to 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 make some impact from educations and and be a peace builders. As a peace builder, we should construct past and uh, peace in our in our country, especially in our anglophone zone, because it's really is we are really needed, and the program is 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 indeed. The the, the 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 point to be because we, we are we are all gathered there because they you, you know that you, the, the the formation will be benefit for us and thank you for 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 the opportunity thank you thank you thank you so much I think we said so if we go to Jackie the next and then if we can give some more names to give people um Tiana from Serbia if you can go after Jackie perhaps and then perhaps Dirk for Ukraine, Russia, and then perhaps Helen from Canada. So we hear from a good mix of different ones. So Jackie. Thank you, Phil. Um, so my name is Jackie Howard and I'm from the USA and I've been very actively involved in the Rotary Action Group for, for Peace this last year. And one of the, and I was, I'm, I was district governor this last year. And one of the initiatives was to build peace builders and peace builder clubs um, in our district and we went from one to 11. So with that, we, we did a lot of education but we found that we needed more. And this opportunity came up and it's like, what a great opportunity. I mean, there's conflict everywhere. There's conflict in the United States and there's so many issues that are polarized. So it's like, what education, you know, broaden our education and look and see how we can get more in the in the middle and kind of stretch our thinking a little bit more, plus working with all the different countries. I mean, there's so much that we can learn from one another and it's like the light bulbs are gonna start going off and looking at um, the action projects to come, um, look, really looking to see what uh, the different teams come up with. So thank you so much. Thanks, Jackie, thank you. Tiana, are you there please? Yes, Phil. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever, wherever you are in the world. Now, my name is Tiana Narisic. Oh, it's crashed for me. It's crashed for everyone else. <laughs> 